Hello, this is Jeffrey Bale, November Tango 1 Kilo, and this is my TRA 4 antenna rotor project. I obtained this rotor right here from a club member, and since I wasn't going to use the rotor, I decided to strip it apart, clean everything out, powder coat the housing, put new bushings in it, and replace any part that has been worn out or has rusted. Um, most of the bolts that were exposed to the weather have basically rusted, so I re I'm replacing them all with, with stainless, stainless steel bolts and nuts and stuff like that. When I got the rotor, it was in it was in decent shape. Uh, decent shape. It it needed some new ball bearings. There were, some of the bearings were rusted inside, um, and it needed some grease. The grease was sort of caked and hard as a rock in there. So I stripped everything out, had it sandblasted or soda blasted it and then I had it powder coated uh, nice uh, nice jet black I'm not sure if this was a wise choice that uh, now that I think about it but um, in the winter time up here in New England I would like the rotor painted black so I can attract the sunlight at least so the rotor wouldn't freeze that that easily and the, that with the right type of I got a low temperature grease in there so I'm hoping those two will keep it at bay but I'm worried about the summertime now about you know once again attracting the sun and making it too hot but I just finished wiring it up this is a rotor that's supposed to be mounted on a mast it's not supposed to be mounted on a tower base or or uh, or inside of a tower so it's a light duty antenna rotor probably handle maybe a, a VHF Yagi but it would definitely hold a UHF Yagi or a TV antenna there's no braking system, and you can see right here, there'd be a lot more, uh, there'd be a whole braking system under here. There's no braking system, so this possibly could turn in the wind depending on what types of antennas are on this. So I'm, I'm thinking about putting this into my attic. I have the uh, CDM, I think that's the, the M box here. I'm going to eventually replace it, but it works. Uh, I got a piece of cat cable right now just to test it out I, I wouldn't use a cat 5 cable as a rotor cable because of the voltages and stuff going into it so when it comes time for installation a real rotor cable a decent rotor cable will be in there and let me show you the the bearings that went, went into here of course when you take one of these things apart these bearings love to go flying everywhere so but I replaced um, the bearing holder which is this plastic part right here and when when the rotor came to me, and I guess it's the fact they do this in the factory as well as they put a bearing in every other slot. So, you know, just think of a bearing in any every other slot. So when I I bought new plastic uh, bearing guides and I polished up the raceways that are inside so they're nice and smooth. And when I bought the ball bearings, I bought double. So now there's a hundred ball bearings in there. There's two rings like this in here and they actually go in there a certain way. I can't really put it in the camera, but they do go in a certain way. So be very careful of if you ever take one of these apart of how you take it apart. Take a lot of pictures, you know, take a picture, then remove a part, take another picture. I'd say pictures is what saved me here because these rings actually go in a certain way. You can put them upside down. It'll bind up the, it'll bind up the rotor. So uh, let's give it a little shot here. You see the, I just slide the thing here, and you see the needle moving. Usually around this point, uh, you'll see the needle, it might jump around. I think there's, oh, there it goes. Um, I think there's something wrong with the, the contacts in there, not making a good contact, causing the resistance to change. But other than that, it works pretty good. It's a little noisy, but I won't be hearing it from where I'm at. And uh, so far I like it. I have a ham free series too that I'm going to do the same thing to. I use this TR, TRA4 as a, a test. But it does rotate. It doesn't have the mass adapter on it. I think I already pointed that out. But There we go. It should shut off and then it hits the limit switch. I think that little limit switch is the only thing to keep it from turning into a windmill if there's a really strong wind on the antenna. But... Uh, as I said, I'm gonna probably put this in my attic so the wind won't get to it, and it'll be nice. It'll be a lot better than the uh, Channel Master that I have up there. That's that's an old, old or or an alliance that I have up there. That's pretty old. So this is uh, this is pretty neat. Thanks for watching.